see this one. Jazz from Bayou to Bay. Old Wax. That's very 50s, isn't it? Oh, it's 1965. No, I ain't feeling that. <clears throat> Look at these guys. Look at his hair. What has happened to his hair? Anyway, this is proper fucking disco, man. That is disco all over. Show us that picture. Let me see the picture. Let's, let's see the picture. Let's give you the bigger picture. Look at that. Look at this man's hair. Like, I don't know what happened here. It just is. Did they have Photoshop in the 60s or what is this? He, fuck me, man. He looks like Mickey Mouse. I think that's the one to go for, man. No, 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 no. I'm not feeling disco. Disco is a bit of a... It's a bit of a long one to do. I mean, all you can do is slow it down a bit and then just chop it up and add some reverb and some effects to it to try and fuck it up as much as you can. This looks interesting. So what kind of music are you looking for? I don't know. Just gonna randomly look for songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so the process, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, you just have to just go through shit, man. You just have to just, it's like when you go crate digging. Unfortunately, I don't have enough room for a, a, a vinyl deck. If I, if I did, then I would love to just just go out and proper crate dig, but it's the same thing, <coughs> excuse me, as walking into a shop or record store, you just, instead of like um, digging through the crates and just looking for each track, um, physically, you're doing the same thing here, and it's the same concept, you kind of just go through like the genres, so here we're going to mainly look at what, jazz and old 70s tracks and random bits and bobs so this is all kind of randomish and you kind of just do the same thing you look at the um album art see if anything piques interest like look, little jong sun that's like korean or some shit what is this north korean music what is this While you're looking at all this, can you run down some of your kit that you're currently using for your music? Yeah, so at the moment I've got a Machine Micro MK2. This is my, this is actually my first <coughs> drum machine sampler. So the MK2 is not is a, not standalone. It has to use the machine software to actually do the the bulk of the the sound is sound so all the sounds are stored just like any door really is stored on the um, computer or in this case the Mac so the machine micro is like your entry level sort of sample sampler drum machine it's good it's compact I mean you can take it to live sessions uh, people use it for loads of different genres. It's, it used to be MPC, like used to be like everywhere, everywhere. And now it's kind of the net machine micro has taken over. But the, I mean, essentially, you can get an a, a, a Kai MPC will do the same thing. For hip hop, it's kind of just you just people are just really after the uh, the velocity pads. But again, it's all relative because you can do everything you need to on one keyboard. Before I had this, I was just using the keyboard anyway. So, But this just gives you a nice little feel. It gets just the way you play is slightly different. And I'm not a drummer, so I just like the way that you can do drums and lay down chops and stuff like this on here. And then I just got a really simple key station 49M audio, which is pretty bog standard. I don't need all this fancy stuff like with the controllers, the faders and all that stuff. I just... I'll, I'll do that on the fly or I'll do it after um, 
I finish the track sometimes just to just tweak it around a bit if I need to and just play around with it. I just like to get the basic track going first cool. and then do that. And then you've got, yes, yeah, so you've got the MacBook Pro, which is powering uh, everything because it's a running machine. This is actually an iMac, so I've already got, I, I've got um, Logic Pro on the iMac, uh, which is pretty good, but then I use it in target display mode, so I use it as a dual screen. Sometimes if I want to switch to using the iMac for Logic, I'll do so, and then I just switch around the cables to get it plugged in. Then I've got the focus right here, Scarlet 2 and 2 out, pretty much does what I need. I've got two inputs to output. It's also got the for the guitars as well, you can plug my guitars in there. It's pretty useful. That's pretty much the equipment that I have. I'm not really, I'm not a professional, basically. I just do it for fun. It's not really, you know, just a hobby, really, pretty much. Um, all right, let me get back to looking at some of this stuff. Lotion, marijuana, Vietnam. What is this? That is some great. Look at that picture as well. Wow. He is high. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. He is fucking high. Oh, Alec Crowley. Now let's move on to the next one. G. Oh, what's this? Hiroshi Satwick. Synth pop. Hey. These guys practic. They did invent synths. A lot of synths. See, look at that, yeah. This is what you do when you create things. You kind of get this, this random picking, you get something that piques your interest. Just go to this random Reddit's page, and then there's just loads of people posting the site. It's similar like producers and stuff. They uh, they just post songs, really, stuff they found through um, digging on YouTube, which is also done through here. There's a lot of um, lot of stuff on YouTube. I mean, there's like people that are literally putting up their old uh, vinyls that they collected from like for years. And this is not like just like young people. These are like proper like old ass people and they've learned how to use YouTube and they're just putting stuff up they're just putting stuff up so I've already put some uh, I've got some that I found before but I like that one that was that was pretty sick this is I like this we're gonna choose this Darwin's theory we'll start with that first so let's let's see how this one goes uh, I use this little software here called Audio Hijack that's going to allow me to basically record all of the internal sounds that are coming from my Mac. Let me just make sure that this, let's change that back to M2i or oh, that would do nothing. Uh, yeah, it's what I use for everything just to record samples from the internet, YouTube, Spotify, whatever, which is, it might be illegal, but it is what it is, man. So I'll do it. Right. System audio. And just to show you, it's actually got a really good interface as well. You can see here. It's pretty simple. All you do is click there. Because um, machine only accepts samples or recordings on WAV. You can't use MP3. So what you can do is you make a presets, custom presets, which I did, and just hit WAV and then it will. Allow you to record in 16 or 24 bit. I say it's 24 bit for now. So, what we've got to do, we'll give it a little, do a little bit. Of so, what you do, just record first. What I'm going to do is record that first. Just going to record that. Like that 
upstairs and see what other parts we can use. All right, now we're gonna to switch to machine. So I'm gonna just put the sample in and stuff like that somewhere in this. I should probably organize this a little bit more, but fuck it, I don't care. I hope it's this folder. Let's see if it's this one. Who is that one? Good. And turn that off. That's all we're going to manage to do. Take it down to polyphony one. So that's just going to stop it from overlapping every time you hit the single, the the actual single pad. I put that on the wrong pad. Let's put it on pad one. So drop the polyphony and the choke as well. So choke is just going to mean when the next pad you hit. It won't overlap a second. So if you hit pad one and then pad two, while pad one is, as soon as you hit pad two, pad one will stop playing. So polyphony stops it from, it's a single pad. So if you hit the pad once and then hit it again, it will cut off before the first time you hit it. Um, so yeah, so we've got that loaded in. I've got the choke down. And let's go to what do we do? sampling. So we hit sampling, and you can see here we've got the waveform here. And actually, I forgot a step here. What you want to do as well is to just avoid you going back and all that playing the actual track every time you hit it is to change the. to change to ADSR, which is here. Start it like this fine. This is fine. This is fine. What you do is you want to change that to that. And the key is there. change it to ADSR, change that back to sampling, you can see, and we'll stop again, what we also want to do is do fixed level, so it, regardless of how hard you press it, it would be a fixed volume of, possibly the highest volume you can get. What I do like to do is normalize it, just so it's as loud as I can get it. Let's uh, start. Let's truncate this even more. Get zoom in. Then we're gonna truncate. We might not need to use 77, we might break it up, but let's see how it goes. Alright, time to chop it. 
So with the new machine, 2.5 update, it's pretty cool. You can basically hit the pads and then it will create drop every time you hit it. So instead of just going through here or in the machine itself and manually chopping each piece, which is pretty cool, you just, and more traditionally, you can just hit each pad every time you feel you need to cut it and it will then cut it at that point and then you can have however many slices you need. There's different modes, obviously I can just do split mode and choose how many slices, up to 32 slices for instance, if I showed you example 16. <laughs> Basically, the four bar loop, and it's been quantized. I did it 50% quantized because if you do it to, it depends. If you do 100%, it can kind of lose its naturalness. But as you can see here, it's pretty much hitting on each other beat. So these lines here is going to dictate if you hit just off, just out. It's just not exactly on the count um, for each sample. So this is obviously the first hit, and then this is like a third of the way through, a halfway of that first um, beat, oh, get rid of that, any of that. And you can see it's pretty much bang on, so. Uh, next thing is, let us build, uh, what I like to do is kind of, with the drums, I mean, I've got quite a lot of drums. So well, the first thing you have to do is just basically just add another group. Fix that. What we'll do, we'll look through. So, Yeah, I just need to tidy it up. I think that's the main, it's got the crux of it. It's just sorting out that bass line a bit and then maybe adding whatever else I feel like just to see if it matches it. But it's just a boom bap, so it's not really anything, you know, overly complex. So 
it is what it is. Sample, drums. Go for it, really. It's just. All right, <laughs> guys. So that's it. I've made the crux of the song. This is the sample, chopped it, did the bass as, as much as I could uh, get it. But I'm going to tweak that because I'm not too satisfied with it fully. But uh, that's, that's the way it is sometimes. And I'll add some embellishments and maybe some other instruments and just add a hook and stuff. But this is really just a quick way of showing you what kind of how I work. Um, if you want to check out some of my other songs, you can check my SoundCloud out, which is Pods, P O D S. Check that out, it's got some other tracks on there. And I'll leave you with this.